Now, unfortunately for us as, as Christians, we have messed up big time. The philosophy of take the whole world and give me Jesus has destroyed us. We have been taught that we are going to heaven. So we should quickly prepare and go. And I always say this, that if you have to go to heaven very fast, don't pray for healing. So that when you are sick, you die. And you can go. Because this word is even enough for Allah. We have Christians today who don't want to get into politics. We have Christians today who say politics is a dirty game. We have Christians today who say that I won't go to school. The reason why I will not go to school is that Jesus is coming. He will come very soon. So if they give you school fees, you use it to pay tithe and offering. You sow a seed so that you go to heaven. Ah, what a world. Why would Jesus, the Son of God, die and his cloth was Luther 6, 7. The dress he wore, it was a designer cloth. That the Roman soldiers, they were not poor men, had to cast lot on a man's rope. What are you telling me? The reason why Jesus did a lot of things at the mountain is that until you are influential, whatever you say is useless. I'm talking to you on what I called after God. What's next? Or what you can also name it kingdom influencers. Now, those of you who are church people, don't get worried about my titles because my titles is not church titles. I give titles that the world will want to see and what. I don't give titles that the church is accustomed to because the world is not interested in our jargons and whatever. You know, I keep telling people this thing that um, you don't go to a shop and they talk to you about how beautiful the shop is. Uh, they talk to you about how their key looks like, how their security door looks like. No, they tell you what is in the store. It is when you come that you read, you say, okay, how do I enter the shop? And they tell you, okay, you would need to pay for this. You need to do this. You need to do this. For the world to enter Christ, we need to talk about what is in Christ, what it is in Christ. And I began a series of um, Jesus Addict where I'm talking to you on the fact that I, the fact that many people don't understand the person of Christ and because of that many are suffering and I'm taking the character of Jesus and portraying his Christ-like nature and how he was able to influence the world. So up to that, when you talk to us about what I've titled that Christ influences and my central scripture still remains Matthew 6. I will be doing a lot with Matthew 20, Matthew 6. Seek ye first 33, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all that you need will be added unto you. And I'll be saying that the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is two things. The kingdom of God is know God, know his nature, know his character, and his righteousness simply means know his principles, his protocols, how he expects you to live your life. Finito. Finito. And everything you need to be granted. You see, you can go to the shop, pick all you want. Go to the mall, pick everything you want. It's yours. But when you get to the counter, you better pay. And so many people get to Christ, they pick whatever they want. I want a child, I want twins, I want triplets, I want marriage, I want this, I want God. And then God says, welcome to the board. Now, this is the kind of thing you need to say, I can't afford it. But he, all he wants to tell you that I have already paid a price. If you can look at what I did, you'll be blessed. So, if you look at the Bible, you will see that if those of who came for our leaders meeting, I went deeper and I said, today being a Father's Day, I'll go deeper about certain things about fathering. But if you go to Matthew chapter 4, reading from the 8th verse through the 11th, the Bible said, and again, the devil take him unto an exceeding high mountain. Know the word high mountain. That is one mountain. And it shows him all the kingdoms. You see, there's the kingdom of God and the kingdom. So, this is talking about the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So, here, Satan shows Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. If you want to have marriage, sleep with a person first, get pregnant and trap the person, yes. If you want to get money, do 419. He was showing Jesus all that the world can do to succeed. He was showing Jesus that, listen, 
This is your mountain. This is the mountain you have climbed. But if you want to be in a certain mountain, then there's something else you need to do. Now, interestingly, when he showed Jesus these mountains and the glory, now many people think that after they become born again, Satan leaves them. Interestingly, Satan visited Jesus because, number one, he had been water baptized. Number two, he has received the Holy Spirit. Number three, he has fasted and prayed. So, this is not because he was not living for God. So, because he, living, he was living for God, Satan came to show him, oh, this is a way to get, it doesn't matter, be a third wife. This is how to make it in life. I mean, he was showing all the kingdoms, all the principles in the world. Let's not forget that um, even Moses, for Moses to become successful, you read your Bible in Acts chapter 7, I believe verse number 22, it also tells you that Moses was landed in the books of the Egyptians, mighty in word and in deed. So Moses, so many people read the book of Maccabees or the books of Moses. They say six and seven books of Moses. These were books Moses wrote before he became Moses born again. These were books he wrote because he had learned the magics and the intrigues and demonic atrocities of the satanic world. So people read it and they try to apply it in God and it doesn't work. Because you see, these things that Moses learned, he wrote a book about it. That's why I always say that the central point of your life should not be based on an Elijah or a Moses, or a Pastor Yale, or Prophet, so, 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 the central person must be the person of Jesus. If the person is not following Jesus, then you are lost. That's why Paul later on said, I think 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, that imitate me as I imitate Christ. If he said, as I imitate Jesus. Imitate me as I imitate. The word imitate is copy me. Even as I'm also copying Christ. Now, in other words, leaders are expected to copy Christ. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. So there are three people imitating here, or two people imitating here. The, the church member is imitating his pastor, Paul. Because Paul is also imitating uh, his master, Jesus. And Jesus who is imitating his master, God. So there's a copy, copy, copy. Now, so it is not really wrong if you copy. Because let me tell you this. The reason why I know I can't feel I'm a, and I'm going to be success is that when I look at my mentors, and I'll go into that, my mentors, I have mentors and I have a father. When I look at my mentors and what they walk through and I see myself walking through, I know I will get there. It's simple. If you are if I Ghana and you are going to um, 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 the FSA, you want to go to America and you talk to somebody and you tell the person that I'm going to the airport and I'm, I find why are you now say I'm at a black woman. I say wonderful. After 30 minutes, I ask you why are you I'm in Isawom. I say, excuse me, why are you going? You say, I'm going to America. I say, look, please, this road, I don't know when you arrive. So, but when you tell me why are you I'm at Ablekuma, why are you I'm at La Paz, why are you I'm around Roman Ridge, I said, huh, you, are, you are getting closer. So, when you see people who have walked the life of Christ, you can easily also look at yourself that if they walk through it, I'm also going to go through it and I know I'm going to become successful. Can I hear an amen? So, Satan will always show you the kingdoms of this world. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Because God has his kingdom and Satan has his kingdom. Now, somebody will say, what is the satanic kingdom? Amen. Where is the satanic kingdom? Now, the satanic kingdom is already around us. You see, when you watch characters and things people do, you will see that the things people do reflect on which kingdom they belong to. Now, if somebody stays in America and for a long time and comes down to Ghana, you can easily see that his accent changes. He's talking, yeah, man, yeah, we're so, we're so, we're so, we're so. because he has got to pick up a culture. Now, if you also look, when you are born in China, you don't need to learn Chinese. You will speak China, Chinese by force. You, you. You, you, you can't but speak it because you will hear everybody speak it. So the people that surround you can influence your life. 
So the devil took him. And I always ask myself, how can the devil take Jesus? Back to Matthew chapter 4, please. How can the devil take Jesus? Because I thought Jesus was all knowing, all powerful. But see, there comes a time that whether you like it or not, every human being you encounter the devil, you will see the devil. You will feel temptation. You will see temptation. Of course, hear me carefully. Now, hear me carefully here. Nobody, if somebody say, Pastor, you are a good teacher, teach me. No teacher teaches without a test. Did you hear me? No teacher teaches without a test. So after every class, there must be a test. After every test, then there can be what? A testimony. So whenever you receive insight in God, you must have a test. And after the test, you will have a testimony. I trust God that as you apply the principles you are learning, God will give you a testimony soon. Can I hear somebody say amen? So he takes him up and shows him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Verse 9, and he said unto him, All these will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. This is two things. Falling down and worshiping are two things. You see, you can you can bend but not worship. You can bend. So some some people put bend to the things of the world, but they say, Oh, I don't control to it, but I'm just around it. But Jesus, Jesus, the devil said, fall down, go prostrate, and give me reverence. Let my dictates be your point of reference. If you tell somebody, the Bible says, oh, to put that Bible thing aside. Yeah, can you answer someone's Bible? Oh, the Bible says, don't do that. The Bible says, eh, hey, that thing is past. If the person is giving you the kingdom of the world and his dictates. Now, Verse 10, we are reading to verse 11. Let's go. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for his reason thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, verse 11 says, Then the devil liberated him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So now, the angels only came and ministered because he had allowed the devil to go. Now, let's go back to verse number 8 and read it again, where you see that. The devil taken up into a high mountain. Now, let me ask you a question. Which mountain are you standing on as a Christian? Which mountain are you standing on as a believer? Now, if you read the Bible, there are seven but eight. I will explain. Seven but eight major mountains. What do I mean by seven but eight? Because Mount Hermon has more than a mountain. But much as Mount Hermon has, is more than a mountain, Mount Hermon uh, has more than one mountain. We have seven major mountains in the Bible. And if you read through the book of Matthew, you will see that Jesus, most of the encounters Jesus had, he had on mountains. The Mount of Transliteration. The Mount of Olives. And Satan also took him to a mountain. Maybe one of the days at our leaders' meeting, I will go into teaching on mountains very well. And every mountain that we talk about in the Bible symbolizes influences. As every mountain is what speaks of an influence. Now, in the book of Isaiah chapter 2, amen, Isaiah chapter 2, take me to from verse 2 to 4, and it came to pass in the last days, and we are in the last days, that a mountain, you see, is one mountain. God doesn't have mountains. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains. Which mountains? The influence of God, the will of God, the mandate of God would permeate and take over every other influence. The mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exalted above the hills and all the mountain nations shall flow unto it now. There's a difference between a mountain and a hill. A hill can be high, but it cannot be as high as a mountain. Of course, there are sub-influences. There are some sub influences There are some sub things that can influence you. Now, like, let me give you an example. Money is a major mountain. I hope you understand me. Marriage. It's a major mountain. 
you, you, those mountains, you need to cross it. Finances, you need to cross it. Being happy in life is a major mountain. But there are some mountains, if you don't get at all, you can be cool. You know, it's, it's life. You, know, you stay there. So, in verse number, let's read on to verse number three. Every nation shall flow, and many people shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he shall teach us of his ways, and he will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go for the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations, and he shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into brandy hooks for that harvest. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So, so when can this thing happen? This thing can only happen when the mountain of the Lord, which is there, Christ influencing the nation, permeate through every facet of the whole world. Now, unfortunately for us as, as Christians, we have messed up big time. You see, the philosophy of <laughs> take the whole world and give me Jesus has destroyed us. Jesus came to the world for God so loved the world. It's not talking about the world as a world, but love the people in the world that he came. Hear me carefully here. We have been taught that we are going to heaven. So we should quickly prepare and go. And I always say this, that if you have to go to heaven very fast, don't pray for healing. So that when you are sick, you die. And you can go. Because this world is even enough for Allah. Why is it that when you commit suicide, you will never go to heaven? Why? Because God doesn't want you dead. In the original plan of God, God did not want us dead. He wanted us to live on this earth forever. But that's why God told Adam, the day you eat this thing, you will die. That is why he took away the tree of life, covered it with the cherubims and the seraphims, so that man will not eat it and live forever in sin. Because God wants you to live forever. But he doesn't want you to live forever in sin. He wants you to live forever in righteousness, in holiness, in serving God with all purity. Can I hear somebody say a big amen? So, in moving on further, I'm talking about kingdom influences. You know that a lot of us have just limited ourselves to one aspect of God's influence, which is what they call, the world called the religious mountain. So if you go to the system, they will tell you that there are seven major mountains that we are supposed to influence in the world. The first mountain is the mountain of religion. The next mountain is the mountain of family. The next mountain is the mountain of education. The next mountain is the mountain of government or governance. The next one is media and media. And the next one is business. So, family, religion, education, government, business, art, and entertainment. Now, so, what has happened is that the church has limited himself, secluded himself from the world, and what we have done is that we are saying secluded. We are in our religious world and nobody is doing anything. Why? We are not influencing the other six aspects. Now, if you read your Bible from Genesis right down to Revelation, you will see that from, from Abraham, Noah, and all those people, they were mighty influences in all the mountains that permeated through the world. Even Jesus influenced it. So, we have Christians today who <coughs> don't want to get into politics. We have Christians today who say politics is a dirty game. We have Christians today who say that I don't want to get involved in um, education, going to school. I won't go to school. The reason why I will not go to school is that Jesus is coming. He will come very soon. So if they give you school fees, you use it to pay tithe and offering. You sow a seed so that you go to heaven. Ah, what a world. Who 
Bible says Jesus didn't even go to school. You read your Bible. He was educated. Acts 2, 20, Acts 2, 52. No, I said, I should look to. He was educated. He built himself very well. He was learned. We are in a world that <laughs> you cannot just be there and not be learned. Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, in favor with God and also in favor with men. So what you need to do is that you must know that as a believer, you cannot just be influencing church. Hear me. Church is not supposed to be a place. Church is supposed to be a place that you come to encounter God. And after you encounter God, you go there and change the world. Let me prove to you. Obadiah 117. On Mount Zion, that is the mountain of God. The influencer shall be deliverance and holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So, possessing Mount Zion is not enough because you don't get delivered from the devil to suffer. You get delivered to possess. You get delivered to possess. So, what is that to possess if you have gotten God? What do you possess again? Okay, I have God. So, why do I need to possess anything again in this world? And if, please, if you understand this message, follow my Christ at this series. I've been doing it for the last three months. And you will get it. So, you must possess your... So, what is your possession? And last week I told you that Jesus thought and said, Luke 19, occupy until I come. So until Christ comes, he has an assignment for you and he has an assignment for me. So a lot of us have, we come to church, we go home, we just live around, hand to mouth, see how we will survive, and then we, we go on. Why would Jesus, the son of God, die and his cloth was Luto 6-7. The dress he wore, it was a designer cloth. The, the Roman soldiers, they were not poor men, had to cast lot on a man's robe. What are you telling me? What was Jesus wearing? You think he was wearing some tattered cloth? He would have been able for the people to say, I want the cloth. Some say they want anointing. Which anointing does he have at the cross? If they respected an anointing, they would not nail him. An anointing you don't respect will not work for you. So if it, you say it's the anointing he carried, that is not also so. Because if it was anointed, then of course, they would not nail him on the cross. There was something special about what Jesus wore. So in going further, you need to understand that you need to be a Christian who influences mountains. Now let's go to some of the mountains very fast that Jesus possessed when he was on earth. Now, in Matthew chapter 4, he went to the mountain of power and riches. The first mountain Jesus went was Matthew chapter 4. I showed you where he saw the power and riches of the world. But see, the devil wanted him to go to before he has it. Sex before a job. You want sex before a job? Somebody say, Pastor, is there any way apart from that? There is a lot of way. Show competence. Let's go on. In Matthew chapter 5, the Bible also talks another mountain. In Matthew chapter 5, we read that Jesus went to a mountain and then he taught them the kingdom principles. And one of the places he said that, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So that it will, it will interest you that most of the serious things that Jesus said, he said it at a certain high pedestal. Yes, and see the mountain, he went up onto a mountain. Jesus didn't start at a low place to speak to the disciples. Let me tell you this. The reason why Jesus did a lot of things at the mountain is that until you are influential, whatever you say is useless. Wisdom is not in the head of the useless. There is a poor wise man who had all the wisdom to teach a city to be saved. But after he had delivered the city, he went back to poverty. Because when you are poor and useless, your words don't have value. Most of the people who talk on radio and TV, nobody's worse than some people who are behind the scenes. But there's nobody to hold their hands and say, this is an opportunity for you. 
Yeah. So Jesus wanted to deal with his disciples. He said, and seeing them, but he went into a mountain, and when he has sat, when he was sat, this is a message by himself. When he was sat, you get to the mountain and you set yourself. His disciples came to him. Let me tell you this. If your disciples come to you where you are not set, they will not value you. Many have lost people that God brought their way because they were not set. They were not ready. You need a certain level of composure. A certain level of influence to attract certain people to you. Are you set? So he began to stick. And he, verse 2. Let's go. Verse 2, please. And he opened his mouth and talked them, saying, hey, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Hallelujah. He didn't just get up and began to teach. Look, there are men of God who know than me. There are men of God who are more powerful than me. But for one reason or the other, maybe they don't have access to what I have. So I look to be more influential. But inside them like the potential. I pray for somebody watching me. May your value be seen by the world. May the world begin to see your value. Begin to lift up your voice in prayer. That God make me valuable. Open your mouth and pray everybody. Lord make me valuable. Let me become an influence. Many people don't have any influence. Have you seen your family? They, when they call for a meeting, you can say everything you want to say. They won't, they won't listen to you. When the rich man can say, Baba, <laughs> Because he went outside here, your account, yeah? You need to become influential. Jesus sat on the mountain and said, Disciples, when Satan even wanted to talk to Jesus, he took Jesus to a mountain. Where he knows his potency is. Man, that's why people struggle to win power. So, in the next one, if you read, I don't have time to take you through all. Matthew chapter 14, verse 23. There's another mountain that Jesus went to to speak to God. And when he has sent the multitudes away, he went up onto a mountain apart to pray. And when he was come, he was there alone. Why? Why would Jesus go to a mountain to pray? You see? So if you say, I'm going to a mountain, I'm told to pray. No. No. Prayer must be influential. One of our fathers or a father of charismatism, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, I was taken by airplane to go to America to just go and pray and dedicate a building and come back. You are there, he said, how can prayer take me far? <laughs> you see? He's an influence when it comes to prayer. So, Jesus went onto a mountain, and what did he do? He told everybody, move, 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 don't, all the money to do, leave me, leave me, leave me, leave me, so that I can stay alone in the mountain to pray. Now, let's go on in Matthew chapter 15, uh, verse number 29. Let's look at another one there. Matthew 15, Verse number 20. And Jesus departed from death and came into the sea of Galilee and went up on the mount and sat down there. Verse 30, please. And great multitude came unto him, having with them those that were lame blind. Wait a minute. You see, for the sick and the lame to come, Jesus went up on another kind of mountain where the people said, let us come to him because this man has the ability to heal, to deliver, to do this, to do that, to do that. Now let me ask you a question. Which mountain are you influencing? So let me tell you this. Every believer, you have, you, some are very good when it comes to principles of God. Some are very good when it comes to principles of business. Some are very good when it's culture in the way of family. Some are very good with entertainment. I hope you're understanding me. But you see, we have left certain things that it is the world. You let's move on. So in Matthew chapter 15, verse 20, now you see that when you there's, there's a mountain that enables you to meet the needs of people. There's a mountain that enables you to just meet needs. Now, the next one in Matthew chapter 17, where Jesus went to the mountain, where we call the Mount of Transfiguration, where 
he was he showed class. He went with disciples, he was praying, and they went sleeping. And before you knew, Jesus had been transfigured, changed into another man. His countenance was changed. Give me from verse number one, please. And after six days, Jesus taken Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up on a high mountain apart. You see, what Jesus tried to tell these three is that you have been following me. You cannot make certain decisions until you have got to a certain height in life. So let me introduce you to the level of influential. Let me introduce you to a height that you need to go in order to be something else. Do you know something? While they were with Jesus up there, Jesus was praying. They left 11, I'm sorry, 9 of the disciples down the valley. And if you read this story, don't take me there. Without in the valley, they brought these people sick person and they could not heal. They couldn't do anything about it. It's only when Jesus came back that they asked him, how could it be this? Jesus said, this kind of thing goes by prayer and fasting. But see, he had introduced Peter, James, and John to the height of the mountain where Jesus was transfigured, where Jesus showed this three that, listen, at my height and my level, I am higher than the law. If anybody is following the principles of Jesus Christ, the law is useless. Oh, I don't have to go through that today. If anybody is going through the principles of the law or of Christ, it's not just the law which is useless. The prophecy is useless. Elijah came, who, who symbolized the prophet, and Moses came, that symbolized the law. They all vanished into Christ. He was just showing them that the influence he Jesus has is higher than those sets that the world follows. So if you read Galatians, it will tell you that the law was our schoolmaster until Christ will come. The law was our schoolmaster. Every law Moses gave was waiting for Christ to come. I always use this um, to, as an example um, that give me Galatians for it. If you can't find, I'm helping you. The law was our schoolmaster until Christ will come. Galatians 3, 24. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. The law was our schoolmaster unto what? Christ would come. Now, hear me carefully here. It's like I have a child and I take the child to a school and the school is saying that A, B, C, and D. You can do whatever you want to do my child to my child as long as my child is in your school. But when I, the original, the parent, I arrive at the school, the school's rule cannot be enforced on my child. So what, what Paul was trying to tell the Galatians is that all the laws that you see in the world, based on Matthew chapter 17, where they all vanish in Christ, when you enter into Christ, whatever law was used against you, you did this so you must pay this price. You did this so you must suffer for this. You did that so you are under a curse. That law is negated. Why? Because it has brought, it was to introduce you to Christ. Now let's move on because that is not my subject. So in going further, you will understand that. Give me Isaiah 217, please. You will understand that every Christian must have some kind of influence over these mountains. Why? Because the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of man shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted all the day. Why? Because if everything is going to go to God, then everybody must be subject to him. Let every other name fade away. I want you to pray that, Lord, let everything that is fighting your will for me fade away. Fade away. Till there's only you, Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. Okay. 
Now, in, in Acts 4, verse number 12, can you take me there? Before Jesus was ascended to heaven, he, Jesus returned into Jerusalem from the mount called Olives, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. He had to take the disciples to the mountain. Let me tell you this. What was Jesus talking about when he was taking them to the mountains? Because see, the problem with the church is that we sit down and we, let, we allow people to teach us family. Yeah, we allow the world. They say they are psychologists. They are whatever. They teach us family. We allow people to entertain us where we should have our own entertainment. Are you here or you want somewhere else? Who is a better businessman than God himself? Who introduced business to the world? It was God. But yet we have allowed the world to have all this influence and we are not having any of these influences working for us. Now I'm going to take you through something because it's very, very important for my discussion. Now today is Father's Day. And I want to blend a little bit of this thing with what I'm teaching because hear me. I see so many people say, I have 20 fathers. I have these fathers. These are my fathers. These are my fathers. You see, that's why I told you something that Jesus, or in the Bible, Jesus says God has only one mountain. Hear me carefully here. But he wants us to influence other mountains. Now, in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 15, please, let's do it. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 15. I'm teaching this for a reason. 1 Corinthians 4, 15. For though we have 10,000 instructors, in other words, listen, you need instructors. The word instructor simply is talking also about those who teach you, those who mentor you. You see, you must know the difference between those who are mentoring you, those who are encouraging you, those who are coaching you, and the one who is a father. So let's be, for though we have 10,000 what instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers? For in Christ, he says, I have begotten you through the gospel. So, so Paul was saying, I have begotten you through the gospel. Now this gospel is talking about is the mountain of religion. Now the mountain of God. Or what um, Obadiah said, on Mount Zion. I hope I'm making myself clear. Now let's look at from verse number 11 in the message Bible, please. Thank you, Jesus. Now, from verse number 14, please. 14. I'm not writing all this as a neighborhood scold just to make you feel rotten. I'm writing as a father to you, my children. I love you and want you to grow up well, not spoiled. Wonderful. 15. We are in the 16. 15, please. There are lots of people around you who can't wait to tell you what you've done wrong. But there aren't many fathers who willing to take the time, wait, take the time and effort to help you grow up. Wait a minute. It is not enough telling people what is wrong with them. I can see. It's not enough seeing. I saw a vision going, it's not enough like that. That, is, that person cannot be a father. There are a lot of people around who can't wait to tell you what you've done wrong, but there, there aren't many fathers willing to take the time, it takes time, two, effort, three, to help you, four, to grow up. It was as Jesus helped me proclaim God's message to you that I became your father. Verse 16, please. I'm not, you know, asking you to do anything. I am not doing, I'm already doing myself. In other words, he's trying to say that even me, Paul, what I'm telling you to do, me, myself, I am doing it. Gamaliel brought me up. Somebody raised me. Somebody tutored me in the word. I had to meet Peter. So hear me. I have I taught and I'm teaching you this that you must have seven major influences. But it should not negate the one who is a spiritual influencer. Let me
me tell you this. If you have a father, a spiritual father or a physical father, unfortunately, our biological fathers are supposed to play that role. But unfortunately, we are in a day, read Malachi. We are in a Malachi 4. We are in a day and a time that fathers have neglected their duties and pastors have taken it over. So pastors are performing dual roles. Both physical and spiritual pastoring or fathering. Whereas the pastor was just supposed to perform only spiritual pastoring. I hope I'm making myself clear. So, in moving on, Bible said, in the last days, children will rebel against their father and fathers will rebel against their children. Why? So that there can be a curse permeated through their life. Give me the King James Version, please. So, in order to avert that curse, fathers and children's heart must be reconnected. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smit the earth with a curse. So hear me carefully, going on. Much as you can have those influences, you need somebody in your life, hear me carefully, who is, when it comes to education, is not a father per se, but he's a mentor. Master, if you're in a family that nobody likes to go to school, we don't go to school. Look, years ago, a president of a nation asked me a question. He said, Pastor, can you give me some people in your church so that as I'm now president, they can help to build the nation? I said, no problem. Then he said, huh, they must have degree in this, doctorate in this, this in that, and that in that. To be very frank with you, I looked through my church and I realized that I have prayed a prayer but I don't have a mountain. Who was I taking? Because you don't take tongues and speak in tongues to govern. Joseph of Arithmetic, read your Bible, was a secret disciple of Jesus. He, there's no way in the Bible that shows where he met Jesus. But when he came to the north, he was the one who boldly went to Pilate and told Pilate that Pilate, I need the body of Jesus to be removed from the cross. Why? There was a prophecy that he must not stay on the cross. His bones cannot get rotten. He must be in a tomb. It must be a rich man's tomb. He, he even just saw a room He didn't know that he was fulfilling prophecy. He's just, his connection with Jesus. Let me tell you this. Where was the religious man Peter, the crippled raising man, he had run away. Because let me tell you, this, there are some things in your life a pastor cannot do for you. Of course, there are some pastors who have the influences. They are, they are serving in one package, but it's rare. One day, they arrested Paul. He was being moved from one place to the other was whipped, beaten. And we're going to take him to the next place to be sentenced. Paul was smart. He said, let me talk to the governor of the state. They said, we, you can't. He said, then I appeal to Caesar. I am a Roman citizen. Since when did Paul become a Roman citizen? Paul had a dual citizenship. He was half Jew, half Roman. He activated his dual citizenship. He said, I appeal to Caesar. They said, hey, so you know Caesar? It influences their decision concerning his life. It's like in Ghana, someone say that energy, they say, uh, I'm in this party, I'm in that party. You, which party can you mention? Which party do you pay your dues? <laughs> so, we are day. I will vote. Whether you vote or you don't vote, whoever comes to power will say, no church service. Only 100 people in church. <laughs> so look at Acts 25 25. The brother when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I was determined to send him. He appealed. 
Who do you appeal to? And this is a body that appeal to God. Oh God, come and save me. I'm sure he had prayed. But he used his political connection to have his case determined. Listen, then said Agrippa unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed to Caesar. In other words, if he had not, maybe they would have set him free. But because he has said he has appealed, they have to go and take him to Caesar. Wait a minute. So, Jesus, it got to a stage, if we look at it from verse number two, you see that he had even connections in Herod's palace. The chief of staff of Herod was his body body. You know what has happened to us? We are Christians. We don't fellowship. We say, what concord? What fellowship has a believer with unbelievers? Yes, we, the word fellowship means that I have a book coming on, on, on um, ships of life. We get that book. The word fellowship means that don't do what they do. That doesn't mean he hates them. Don't copy them. Let them copy you. Don't let them influence you. Influence them. One day, I met a very powerful woman. Very, 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 very powerful woman. If I say powerful, I mean powerful. Politically, she was an ambassadorial position. And she couldn't get married. And as I was talking to her, I said, why are you not getting married? She was growing. He said, you know, my nature of job, I'm an ambassador. I go from nation to nation. Then I'm also this in church. I said, have you been to a party? I said, party? He said, no, I don't go to party. Have you gone on a date? I don't go for date. I said, then you remain single for life. I said, the nature, you are 40 something years. You are not like a young girl. The places that you can go and meet people, you don't go. And the places you go to, you go to are places you are boss. No, no, none of your subordinates will propose to you. So go to a place, like I told a story of a man whose daughter was not getting married. Growing, 30 years. One day the man called the daughter and said that, from today, I take your car key from you. You remember that story? That's not a, why would you take my car key from me? He said, from today you are picking truck truck. He said, at least when you sit in Totoro, you sit by a man who will say, how are you? And life can begin. Because every day you are driving with your air conditioning, who, who, who is seeing, who is talking to you? Scattered on the Totoro. You see, we have... <laughs> Should I end? I don't think somebody is enjoying my message. That's why I said, Should I end? <laughs> we, have, we have said, oh, we don't have any influence in government. We are part, when we started discussing political issues on radio, men of God called us to insult us. Today they do more than us. I remember when you see a senior man of God in this nation, he said, This you are doing, you will die. But now they do more than us. They meet government officials. Well, we thank God some of us started this thing. Because the truth is that you cannot be there. One day, this is a life story. I was taking a guest of mine, Dr. Philip I, to his hotel. He has come to preach for me. I'm telling you how government work. When I went there, AMA had removed the speakers and the sound system of a church. I don't know the pastor. He's not my friend. They were taking it away. I got there and I said, hello. Who is in charge? They mentioned the person. I said, I am so so and so and so. I said, oh, man of God, how are you? I said, why are you doing this? I said, please take the things back. I want to negotiate on the person. If you are so man of God, if you say that, you have heard you, we will do it. They pack the things. Then the man will go look at me and say, who are you? I said, I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. The prayer of the man of God could not save him. Because let me tell you this. That's why many people are praying, but they are poor. Because let me tell you this. If you don't to put yourself, Bible said, Jesus went on the mount and set himself before calling his disciples up. A pastor who doesn't influence any of these mountains that I mentioned will not go anywhere in this kingdom. Yeah. 
you, a pastor should also have influence on the mountains of family. Did you hear me? Or did you hear me? A pastor should have influence in entertainment. Art, media, entertainment. One day, this is life. A man of God came from Singapore. And he was like, what is all this news in Ghana about this, that, that? And I told him a story. I said, listen, when you listen to the news, don't just listen to the news. There are those who make the news and those who listen. He said, ah, I don't understand. I said, follow me. So I took him to a radio station. And I said, sit in my car and listen to this station. I'm coming. And I wrote down some things for him. You should read. As he was reading it, the presenter on the radio station was asking the questions I gave him. So when I came, I said, ah, the presenter was asking the things you were asking. I said, yes. The presenter who is behind the console asking, somebody sitting somewhere in his house, sending him what to ask, what to do. You, the house, you are just listening. So they can take a man of God and drivel him. Wait a minute. When Jesus was alive, he was a very smart Jesus. I mean, very smart. A rich man came to Jesus. Later, history will tell us that it's Lazarus. He said, look at the rich man. He said, go and sell all your property and go and follow me. Of course, if we read Mark chapter 10, you'd have known that Peter Debs have done sin. Because Peter then came to Jesus and said, we've left all our properties and followed what will we get? This man said he would not sell his property and follow Jesus. But guess what Jesus told him? Jesus went to visit the man in his house. That is Lazarus. Was eating in his house. His sisters became Jesus' best friends. Were cooking for him. If it is you, you say that man doesn't have feet. Jesus, of course, said that, look how rich it is. How difficult it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom. He didn't say that that rich man would not go. He said it's difficult. It means that there's more work when he has to deal with rich people than poor people. <laughs> he said it is difficult for the rich to enter. It is like a camel going to the eye of a needle. So as all Brenna said, you must reduce the person inside. One day Jesus, another rich man, was going in somewhere and he saw a short man hanging on a tree and they told him this man he's a wicked man he's a 419 he collects taxes when the government says you take 10 Ghana, he will take 20 Ghana and he went right 10 Ghana to government <laughs> he said is that so what's his name, he said Zacchaeus, he said, Zacchaeus get down Today, I'm going to eat in your house. Hey, hey. If today a pastor should tell somebody, a Zacchaeus in that generation, that he's going to his house to sit there and eat, church will collapse. If they hear that a Zacchaeus has sponsored a church, they'll say that church is demonic. When Jesus went to the house, the man did a big party. Guess who was in the party? The Pharisees were there. They were eating, but they were talking. Hey, he's eating with poor people as if they, they were not eating. So. But by the time Jesus was done with Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus said, I repent. If I've stolen, if I've done this, I've done that, I have changed. I am returning everything I've taken and I'm returning it. Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false acquisition, I restore him fourfold. Now hear me. Jesus influenced the business mountain. The business mountain did not influence him. I don't know whether you are getting me. Many men of, I have cases where men of God will come and say, man of God, how are you? Can you come for your tithe? And I say, I don't. I don't come for tithe. I said, bring you the tithe. People Sometimes rich people have a way of making men of God koto. Can you send that your daughter to my office? For what? I want to go on a date with her. Nonsense! Because you are rich. 
It's easy to go to people. But Jesus was so principled that he did not allow people to influence his influence on the mountain. Because listen, all the mountains must submit to the Lord at the last days. Whether it is Pilate, Pilate repented. By the time Pilate encountered Jesus, he told the people, and me, because the Pilate's wife had a dream. He said, I can't kill this man. I wash my hands. Let the blood be on you. Oh, let the blood be on us. Herod said, I can't do anything to you. Just sweep him and leave him. I don't have any accusation. The government itself did not want to do anything to Jesus. Jesus had influenced them. But guess what? Because it was mandatory for Jesus to die, the people said, let the blood flow. Well, let's go to art and entertainment. Mountains. Jesus met a woman. Waited for this woman, John chapter 4, at the well. <coughs> Why? Because if he had told the disciples that he's going to talk to this woman, the disciples would have said that, no, because this woman is false. I, we'll call this woman like today, she's a slay queen. Somebody who is bold enough to say, I sleep with people's husbands. I mean, John chapter 4. That is not an easy thing to say. And those days, it was unpopular. You'll be stoned for it. So she knew her character. So she only came to buy water or to take water from the well when everybody has gone out. And she says, I know when you arrive. We waited for him at the well. When she came, look at her. So religious. And we are, I don't want, I don't go to bridge ministries. I don't go to light. I don't go. People, you see, it's not about church. It's about you serving God. She says, yeah, yeah, you are right. It's not about mountain or it's not about Jerusalem or whatever. But you say, God is a spirit. And that way she might oh, say, yeah, she said, okay. Go and bring me your husband. So I don't have, uh, Jesus, they say, I don't have a husband. I said, you are speaking truth. Before Jesus, Jesus has spoken to you, this woman, and this woman said, hey, let me do this. The woman went to the city of Samaria and brought all the men. I'm sure it grew that the men she slept with. To Jesus. Now, why didn't Jesus himself go to the city? But to tell you the truth, if Jesus had gone to Samaria, the slave queens would be there. Samaria and the Jews and the Samaritans were enemies. The Jews didn't have much against them, but Samaritan had much against him. Let me tell you this. Even with your business you are doing, there are some people, if you use their face for your brand, people will come. You, your face, nobody knows. <laughs> and I wait to say, and I wait to say, but the most important thing is that the slave queen who came to Jesus, by the time he encountered Jesus, the slave queen had become born again. The, the funny thing is that these days the slave queens come to church and they convert us to slave kings. Before you know, the conversion has changed. If not, for a prostitute by name Rahab, Another slave queen. This one there, she was not just a queen. No. She was a slave. Slave mama. He saw this two men enter his hall. He gave them a place to hide. Latest clients. He doesn't want anything to happen to his clients. When they came down, he said, yes. Which lady do you want to sleep with? And the two men said, no, we are not here to sleep with anybody. We are Jews. They say, hey, you are Jews. I heard about your God. How he opened the Red Sea. What is coming to happen? They said, we are coming to say, oh, the woman said, save me and my family. Guess what? The two men changed the woman. The woman saved Israel. You see, the problem with us is that many of us don't know that God is using us to change the world. You come to church and you live the life of Christ outside the church. 
I expect church members to make mistakes in church and be corrected. You don't do the mistakes outside. You do it in church. In church, in outside church, you model it. I think you have to continue this message next week. So hear me. You need a central father who influences your mountain, I don't call it religion, of Christ, so centric of Christ. Who can nurture you in life. But after this, you need mentors. As Paul said, instructors. Who is your instructor when it comes to family? These days is rare. People can come on TV and say they have 50 children with 20 wives and nobody says anything. Yeah. But we need mentors who build family. We need mentors who are business mentors. We need mentors that when it comes to art and entertainment, they are what we look up to. Let me tell you, they are Christian comedy. Oh yeah, wonderful. Wonderful Christian comedies. Someone was telling me that, man of God, I want something, message, some music to dance with my wife. But Christians don't do coos. I said, is that so? Let me give you some. If you want coos, coos. Holy Ghost coos. You have it. Hey, there are coos that are cooler than other coos. Than the Brian Adams. No, Brian Adams. If you sing a song like Hold me close, let your love surround me. It's powerful. powerful. Isn't it, isn't it powerful? <laughs> you know something? The church has alienated itself from the earth. The earth is the laws and the fullness that rob the world and they that dwell in of course, Satan was then in charge of the world. But after Christ came to die, he gave it back to us. The world is no more in the hands of Satan. It used to when Adam gave it. But after Jesus said it is finished, he went, collected the keys, and gave gifts unto us. What are you doing? Of course, we will all die. But the Bible says, David, after he had served his generation according to the will of God, he slept with his fathers. May that be your portion. May it be written of you that, oh, as Francis, as Kweku, as Ajwa, mention your name. After he has fulfilled the will of God for his generation, David influenced every facet of society. Every facet. And you see, that's why sometimes the world thinks that if you're a Christian, you are a dolu. Wait a second. They cheat you, and when you are told, you say, Are you not a Christian? I'm a Christian, but I understand business. Yeah, I'm a Christian, but I understand politics. No, this is why you can't you can find in first case, you can find in the book of Acts. David, after he's left with his father, is in the book of Acts. It's not in 1 Kings 2, 10. What will be said of you? You are just going to church? If Jesus had not inf- I can give you every facet that Jesus influenced. In terms of family, I mean, you give it to entertainment. Jesus went to weddings. A wedding he said they did entertainment. And when the wine was finished, he gave them original appeal. The people drank. And they said, Hey! Where was this wine? We are spoiled our stomach. Acts 11, 13, 36. For David, after he had served his own generation, 
by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid on his fathers and saw corruption. Actually, he was not supposed to see corruption. But he had to see corruption because the body by nature is sinful. I don't have time. I'll teach you the Bible. Says he will not suffer his holy one to see corruption. Holiness prevents your body from receiving corruption. Holiness preserves the body. So hear me carefully. Which area, apart from your going to church, the six that is left, which area do you think God is calling you to influence? We sit down. No Christian goes to parliament. They can sit down and enact a room. Gazing. Homosexuality has been passed. You know how they pass it? Let's vote. All believers are in the chamber. Why? Because no Christian is there. In our church, we are raising politicians. We are raising businessmen. We are raising people in the arts and entertainment. We are raising people who are modeling their family. Every area that will influence society, we are there. Why? Because that is the only place to have a voice. When you are on a mountain, you will have a voice. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Thank you for watching. Now, this week, I'll be doing counseling. And this counseling, I want to trust God to help you understand which area God is asking you to be part of. Now, if you want to book an appointment with me to come for this counseling, there are numbers on your screen. For a church member, you know the lines to call and book these appointments. Please, it's strictly by appointment. If you come and you, are, you have no appointment, I will not see you. And you know me, I will not. Because it is a free, we don't charge, but it's, you must come by appointment. But hear me. God wants you to influence. You can be a medical doctor. You can be an influence. You can be a lawyer. You can be an influence. Paul did well because he was a lawyer. Paul did better than Peter. Not because Peter, Peter met Jesus face to face. Paul met in the spirit. Peter was a lawyer. Lord, so Paul was a lawyer. He was learned. Go to school. Study. Build yourself in the Lord. Until you die, there is hope for you. See as the Lord. In the evening, Relationship 101 is coming. And I trust you will have a wonderful time as my wife takes us up. It's offering time. I want you to send your offering to our Momo lines, to our bank account. Yes, I've been having a lot of calls from you that I don't talk about offering. I keep forgetting. Forgive me, it's a big sin. Let's send our offerings, our seed, our tithe to the numbers above. And let's not forget that our church building project is still ongoing. So let's keep helping, supporting for the work to be done. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.